The history of the Jews from the end of the Babylonian captivity to the siege of Titus in 70 AD is a fascinating piece of history full of great stories. We all know that the best of the Jews were taken off to Babylon in captivity and there they languished for 70 years. Actually they didn't all languish, some of them did very well, for example Esther, Nehemiah and Daniel. But nevertheless they were far from home. And then in 538 Cyrus conquered the Babylonian Empire and he introduced a new policy that allowed the Jews to go back to Israel. He even provided some money for it. So in 538 the first wave of Jews went back to Israel and I personally think 2nd Isaiah was in that wave. Now in that wave the leader was a man called Zerubbabel. His name's easy to remember because the people said Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, come at the double, our houses are ruined and our temples in rubble. And he was a good builder and he helped to rebuild the houses and he rebuilt the temple within 20 years. And it's a real remarkable thing that he began with putting the spiritual life right and then worrying about the rest. Nevertheless, the city remained somewhat in ruins and the walls were not rebuilt and they just remained vulnerable to any vandals that wanted to come and attack them. And it was a hundred years before Nehemiah came and rebuilt the wall and Jerusalem became again a city of dignity, defendable and able to take its place in the world. Nevertheless, they were not independent. All this time, another hundred years beyond, they remained a province of the Persian Empire. They had a measure of self-government, but they were subject to someone else. They were not independent. The Persian Empire came to a very abrupt end with the meteoric rise of Alexander the Great from Greece. In ten short years, he conquered the entire Persian Empire, even extended it, and created the greatest empire the world had ever known. And then, abruptly, at the age of 33, interestingly the same age as Jesus, he died. And by design, his kingdom was divided into four and split between his four most trusted generals. And so there were four kingdoms. One was the Ptolemaic in Egypt, one was the Seleucid Empire based in Syria, and then there was one in Asia Minor and one in Greece. And so the land of Israel found itself now under the rule of the Ptolemaic Empire of Egypt. And that went on for a hundred or so years. And then Syria took over, and so they found themselves for 60 years under Syrian rule. Still no independence. And that went okay until a man named Antiochus Epiphanes came to power in Syria. Write his name in black. One of the great villains of Jewish history. Someone has said he was mad, bad, and dangerous to know. His name Epiphanes he gave himself, and it meant... God incarnate, would you believe? For some reason he took an intense dislike to the Jews and the Jewish religion. He set out to eradicate it. He outlawed the Jewish religion. He set up a statue to Zeus in the temple and sacrificed pigs on the altar. That became known in the book of Daniel as the abomination of desolation. Enter stage left the fearsome Maccabean family with their father Matthias and his five fierce sons. The leader of those sons was Judas Maccabeus, and he raised an army of revolt. Somewhere I read that they reckoned it was probably the best motivated army with the best morale in the history of the world. And they perfected a method of guerrilla warfare very suited to the hills of Judea. And they defeated Antiochus. And they kicked out the Seleucids, and for the first time, they gained their independence. Very quickly they cleansed the temple, so again the center of religion could be established. But the story goes that they only had enough oil to keep the nine lights of the menorah burning for a single day. But they lit them, and it would take eight days before they could get new supplies. And the miracle was that those lamps burned for those eight days, and that led to the happy festival of Hanukkah, the festival of lights. And it's really the Jewish equivalent of Christmas. There are all sorts of lovely children's songs like, Get on your yarmulke, here comes Hanukkah. And so for 80 years the Jews had their independence. I've colored it in gold, but it was by no stretch of the imagination a golden era. There was a tremendous amount of infighting. No less than three of the Maccabean brothers were murdered when they came to power. 
But eventually, the son of Simon Maccabeus, John Hyrcanus, came to power, and for a little while things were at peace, and they even extended their empire somewhat until they were the best they'd ever been since Solomon. But it wasn't to last. In 63 BC, Pompey the Great came, and he annexed Israel and made it a province of the Roman Empire, and they lost their independence again. Worse was to follow in 38 BC, when Herod the Great came to the throne, a client king of Rome, he was hated. He was called Herod the Great because he gave himself that name. But he was great in one sense. He was the greatest builder that Palestine ever knew. If you go to Israel today, you will find buildings of Herod the Great all over the place. And ironically, right at the time of Christ, he brought Jerusalem to its most beautiful that it had ever been in its entire history, including the time of Solomon. People came all over the Roman Empire to look at the wonderful site. They took Jesus up on the mountain top at the Mount of Olives and said, come and look at this magnificent site. And all he could do was weep and predict that it would all come tumbling down. Well, that came true 40 years after he was there. Now, during the time of Christ, there were three groups of people. We all know them well. They were the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Zealots. The zealots were those who remembered the revolt of the Maccabees and they carried a hope that they could reproduce it and they could overthrow Roman rule. And so they made the attempt. It was one of the great underestimations in history. The Romans were not the same proposition as the Seleucids. And so Titus came in 66 and he squashed the revolt brutally. And in 70 AD, Jerusalem was utterly destroyed. The Jewish people were scattered to the winds and the land of Israel lay fallow for 1900 years. Or if not lay fallow, it at least was trampled by foreigners and that included the Turks and the British. And then in 1948, the state of Israel was declared and once again, the Jews are enjoying independence. Perhaps not enjoying all that much. Whether this is the glorious restoration predicted in Isaiah 60, I leave for you to decide. And so there we have it, the history of the Jews from the end of the Babylonian captivity to the present day. I hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.